Welcome back friends. As I suggested in my last discussion that let us try and visualize how brand managers they try to understand what should they be doing and for understanding that they try to read the hearts of customers, minds of customers is one thing but they try to read the hearts of customers. You see branding is all about reaching to the hearts of customers and when we were talking of brand value chain, you remember that we tried to discuss that brand value chain has executable points and measurable aspects. So, first one has to think in terms of measuring things and then executing things. But then for measuring things, we must have measuring scales, we will be talking about this, but then we must have measuring methodologies, methods through which we measure what is going on, what must be done. Brand audit is one of those things, I will be talking about these broadly and brand research methods also I will be talking broadly, I will be naming few, deciphering few, but would suggest that if you are deeply interested in such kind of methods and methodologies, you may refer to uh, a standard marketing research book and that definitely would elaborate upon so many aspects to it. So, let us look at brand audit. You see is it is a comprehensive examination of a brand to discover its sources of brand equity, sources of brand equity from where the brand equity is coming up or how to strengthen the brand equity. Now concept of brand audit is externally oriented, it is customer focused also and it assesses the health of the brand, you know, how, how, how it is flourishing, how it is growing. A couple of sessions ago we talked about happy dent for example. Now you must know that do people remember you, do people remember center fresh, how do they remember center fresh. So assessing the health of the brand, in, in terms of sales and revenue definitely it can be deciphered. But the point is that you want customers to be retained, you want brand equity now and the sales is not only the objective because you are more than a product, you are a brand. Then the concept of brand audit is also related to uncovering the sources of brand equity. It is related to suggesting the ways to improve and leveraging the brand equity as such. Then there is a brand audit perspective related to firm and the consumer. You see now, now let us see both the aspects associated with brand audit. So brand audit requires understanding sources of brand equity from the perspective of the firm as I said and the consumer. Now a firm based perspective is related to understand exactly what product and services are currently being offered to the consumer and how they are being marketed and branded, examining ourselves enumerating the strengths and how we have gained those strengths and listing the weaknesses and how we would be eliminating those weaknesses. You would say that I am referring to SWOT analysis, yes I am but again the point is it is a difficult thing, it is not that easy. Recognizing a weakness and then recognizing a methodology to overcome that weakness especially in terms of brand equity, it is a tough deal. We have to go through whole of the process of developing the brand and we must understand the complete brand value chain and the brand development story we have gone through. Probably the person who is steering that is not the one who has lived with it. So he must understand that through documents or through narratives or through people who would have lived through that or through an understanding which has been built in due course of time across the board by several kinds of people by talking to them and that is where brand research would come in. I will be talking about that. 
So, the consumer perspective is necessary to dig deeply in their minds and tap perceptions and beliefs to uncover the meaning of brands and products. You see there are few steps and uh, you know two are major one is brand inventory and the other is brand exploratory. So, brand inventory is to provide a current comprehensive profile of how all the products and services sold by a company are marketed and branded and it the, the brand inventory analysis includes you know descriptions like the names, logos, symbols, characteristics, packaging, slogans or other trademarks used. We have talked about the elements. Now, we have to wonder how these elements have been taken what you know what they emanate how are they talked about the inherent product attributes or historical characteristics of the brand and pricing communications distribution policies and any other relevant marketing activity related to the brand we have talked about designing marketing programs for developing brand equity now through brand inventory perspective we are trying to decipher that did we do something right and that is where you know this this thing comes in now comes in exploratory perspective it provides detailed information about what consumers think of the brand brand exploratory is a research activity designed to identify potential sources of brand equity now here we are focusing upon potential sources in inventory we are talking about existing aspects and trying to gather on you see many a times even if we get to know that a name has been taken with a specific connotation but you would not be changing the name so easily so you would be actually associating something with that name so you you must understand how that name is being taken but then what is the potential source that is where exploratory comes in and the activities that are useful for brand exploratory are reviewing past studies, interviewing relevant personnel to get some insight, qualitative and quantitative researches. I will be talking about these. Now, let us look into you know Amazon for example, a very large wide vast example very quickly I will reiterate few facts uh, for you. Uh, in terms of Amazon for example, let us talk about brand inventory and product and you have variety of product classification. For example, Amazon basic studios, Amazon fresh, Kindle, warehouse, Amazon prime and so on just go to your website and you will find so many names. And then pricing you know they, they use value pricing, they, they even uh, you know go for uh, everyday low pricing and distribution it is it's a whole lot of a distribution world around Amazon basically and, and just do not have to mention but a uh, little bit of statistics would clarify uh, so many things for you. Uh, you see uh, there, there is a virtual delivery channel for example that is that is for sure and then they are very wide plus a very efficient system which they have maintained in terms of as far as their online channel goes. But in physical channel terms also they are uh, you know they are they are vast half a million square feet storage capacity in distribution centers which is big and Amazon's next day and same day guaranteed uh, service delivery is there supported by their online and offline uh, channels and then 34 fulfillment centers with more than 61 million cubic feet of storage capacity that is big. So, you see that is where uh, you know brand inventory perspective comes in then there is innovation it you know it is uh, its evolution from online bookstore to device manufacturer to publishing service to global marketplace fulfillment network and cloud computing provider is driven by the passion and for pioneering and inventing of cust on customers behalf and so on and then there are brand elements there are slogans there are colors has implement they know they have implemented four main colors in their brand logo for example black represent dominance orange stands for pride and happiness and green represents feeling of freshness and you know sustainability and white conveys the image of being all encompassing so it's it's a thoughtful kind of a process 
and in terms of exploratory perspective, it is a customer centric online retailer, reliable, secure, trustworthy, customer centric, fast, convenient. And Amazon's brand resonance pyramid is well structured, well shaped up if you would go to you know the resonance pyramid. And, and uh, just that reminds me of the fact that why you should not be doing this exercise for other brands as well. Try and do that, try to go to the websites of other brands uh, you know uh, larger brands and try to put them across the value chain model as well as brand resonance model. And then definitely you know you will have a fair idea of what we are talking of and especially you would be able to enumerate the brand inventory and exploratory perspective both ways and then you would realize that how an organization should understand these elements. I will be talking of you know brand research now onwards and I will be talking of few methods which are very specific in terms of uh, you know developing our understanding. Now, there are some certain objectives of brand research. It aims to identify the processes by which brands create value and develop a portfolio of methodologies for measuring the market impact of brand. Now, here word methodologies is very important. The point here is that you know that you want to decipher something by, by, by asking someone, especially customers even your channel partners, but how would you approach them? What kind of questions you would ask? And, and if they say something, how would you decipher that? Should the method be incorporating uh, the mode of analysis as well? Should it be giving you the direct clue on what customer wants? Or should you be collecting you know specific numbers in terms of or answers in terms of you know data and then con converting those into numbers and then cross, uh, you know uh, going going for uh, you know uh, uh, judging those across dependence and independence factors both can be done. But for taking real decisions ground level decisions we must talk to the respondents, the customers with intensity. We must become their part actually. I have talked about reflexivity and reflexive approach quite a couple of times up till now. In product management also I tried to mention on that you if you want to understand that how to reach to heart of someone, especially customers, then definitely you must understand a reflexive approach, reflexive research approach. So, but uh, I will be uh, you know beyond that I will be going for some specific methodologies as well. So, major objectives of brand research are to assess customer perception about brand, again brand health, competition also, the comparative perspective because you must know where do you stand in comparison, then potential because you do not have to stop in terms of you know meeting the competition actually your your main focus is the customer and competition is a hindrance. So, you have to bypass or meet the competition to reach the customer and to retain the customer and so on. So, and that definitely should be supported by your brand strength the uh, brand equity. Now, then assessing market opportunities and evaluating brand innovation. Let us see there are few techniques, methodologies for supporting us in all these endeavors or all these objectives should I say. Qualitative research techniques for example, free associations, projective techniques, Zoltman metaphor elicitation technique famously called as ZMET and then neural research methods. I have talked about this once before when I suggested that science has helped marketing a lot basically and especially in marketing research and then also in integrated marketing communication. Then laddering method and then brand personality and values. These names they have uh, you know come up from uh, their founders for example, ZMET has come from Zoltman and few names have come up uh, you know through their uh, orientation basically. 
So, then on the quantitative side and you see here I must clarify one thing. To me and to my understanding qualitative and quantitative bifurcation is on the basis of the analysis done. In qualitative analysis you decipher the results through qualitative understanding or descript detailed description. In quantitative the, the questions and the approach definitely are in terms of words, you cannot ask questions in terms of numbers, but then those are converted into numbers for correlating with each other, for being you know considered as dependent and independent kind of and then for uh, using statistical methodologies to analyze on the results and then re-deciphering those results to make a meaning out of those. That is why quantitative perspective is, is uh, you know uh, segregated from qualitative perspective, but both of these are supposed to be driven with an approach in relation to reaching to the right respondent with right kinds of questions. Now, here quantitative research techniques are associated with brand awareness, brand image, brand responses, brand relationships and all these names definitely are associated with either impact or relationship. That means, a dependent variable, independent variable or multivariate kind of multivariable kind of an analysis. So, brand awareness for example, you have generated uh, a message or you have tried to make uh, you know people getting aware of something and, and uh, in response you want to learn that how aware they are. So, that is what uh, you know I, I mean to say. Now, let us see, you see free associations for example. Now, it is a powerful way to profile brand associations in which subjects are asked what comes to mind when they think of the brand without any more specific probe or cue than perhaps the associated product category. For example, what comes to their mind when they think about the brand or the associated product category helps form a rough mental map for the brand. Now, you see you just give them a wider kind of a perspective and you are you are you know uh, discussing them on a wider uh, level basically just to know that what comes to their mind. Because you want to know that if somehow without any stronger cue larger uh, you know uh, descriptive perspective they are associated or they at least know the brand. And many a times you know for example, uh, I feel happy to uh, talk about it, but, but just to mention that you talk you, you mention IIT in front of anyone for example. So, so they will immediately tell you what it is and, and that is what I am referring to when in terms of you know going just with a, with a vague kind of a perspective uh, or a discussion with the respondents and any respondent for that matter. Projective techniques are unstructured indirect forms of questioning uh, you know uh, and, and to encourage respondents to project their underlying motivations, beliefs, attitudes or feelings. Now, we are going a step ahead and consumers usually see an incomplete stimulus for example, a sentence and are asked to complete it. So, there are association techniques, construction techniques and expressive techniques you know you just give a clue and you may give that clue in terms of the product. For example, you may say that you know uh, bottled water, you may you may you may give a clue in terms of a message about that product basically. For example, there was a famous advertisement Sunil Babu and you may mention that and the customer might finish the advertisement with the brand name. If the brand name comes along with the completion of the sentence, things are going the right way. Now, consumers see a stimulus and are asked to respond with the first thing that comes to mind and to elicit multiple attributes you can use the methods at varying levels of abstraction starting from the brand down to attribute starting with the brand name continuing with the product attributes, user perspective, usage imagery, brand personality, feelings and experiences and then you may you may start you know from any point basically. Then there are picture response techniques. Respondents are asked to tell stories of the pictures shown. You may you may show a simple picture uh, from an advertisement, and then 
you know they may put up kind of a response to that or you may vaguely put up a cartoon in front of them and then they may respond to it you know with, with what what comes to their mind basically you want to read their minds if at all they resonate with your brand somehow then there are role playing it's also very interesting it's it's, it's a controlled environment kind of a research wherein you know you bring on board people and and uh, you know uh, respondents are asked to play the role or to assume the behavior of someone else then there are you know third person techniques where and respondents are presented with verbal or visual situation and asked to relate the beliefs and attitudes of a third person rather than directly expressing personal beliefs again so you you want to think in terms of how other others would be thinking in terms of and and you want to look at those people with the eyes of the respondent basically Every, everything has its own value and and you want to go into the deeper of the insight you you know yeah, one must gain in terms of steering the brand remember we are talking of growing the brand's life and enabling the brand with equity that means value so much so that product sells by itself that means the name and that value keeps on growing so that is the perspective around we are talking of and we have already talked about the shareholders value on one side customer value on the other side market performance on the other side price premium on the other side resonance on the other side and so on now zmet as i said you see given that more than 80% of human communication is non verbal as they say this technique uses qualitative methods as personal interviews to elicit metaphors now it, it is based on metaphors basically and constructs uh, you know and then along with mental models that drive customers thinking and behavior so so it's very interesting basically wherein you know you you put up the usage of metaphors and constructs to uh, look into the hearts or minds of customers you see there there are uh, several people who are brought on board then one to one interviews are done and you know key themes are identified and then the process goes on now laddering methods they are useful way to elicit the higher order benefits and values offered by the brand beyond immediate product user or usage usage related attributes now you see you want to actually think in terms of how the customer deciphers the brand perspective along with the product itself does it gels you see uh, the customer or the respondent is happy with the brand is he satisfied with is he satisfied with the product itself so so is it working both ways it should not be that after a particular stage while trying to build up brand equity we leave behind the core usage and the value of the product so name would remain but then product would not be there and i have talked about such kind of examples a lot and that is why brand managers are very very uh, keen on understanding this element of you know and it works by asking consumers to explain why the first elicited associations are important for them and then why these benefits are important at all basically then there are neural research methods and i talked about that uh, you know for example eeg is there electro uh, encephalograph now again these have been used to to uh, actually uh, decipher that what a customer feels when talked about in terms of you know uh, several products basically what kind of sensation comes to the mind of the customer basically fitolays hired neuromarketing firm neurofocus to study how consumers responded to their cheetos cheese flavored snacks so people are using science to decipher on what kind of a sensation sense it actually emanates while talking about a particular kind of a product and it works you know and there there are some uh, 
ophthalmic devices which are used for example to to judge the emotions of the uh, viewer in terms of a message also then there are some you know uh, sound uh, related experiments also and several wonderful experiments which are based on the uh, scientific understanding and scientific knowledge then brand personality and values and it, it's it's again uh, a very important thing for us to uh, analyze because ultimately brand develops its own personality even if the brand manager is not systematically steering that so one day if you are actually taking a product to become a brand and developing and you are, you are uh, designing marketing programs to develop its equity it it will develop a personification because customer would get associated with the brand with a personality perspective for example hallmark has a sincerity uh, you know aspect and then walt disney has an uh, has an aspect of excitement entertainment toyota has an aspect of competence dove has sophistication woodland has ruggedness and so on and then you know there are several elements to recognition recall and there are strategic implications as well and i will be focusing on strategic implications for now wherein you know this this uh, is related to developing an insight into how brand knowledge is organized in memory and identifies the cues or reminders necessary for consumers to retrieve the brand from memory so recognition and recall so there are several wonderful methods uh, you know unaided recall for example aided recall that that means you give a clue and you don't give a clue and so on and then there are brand association beliefs multi dimensional scaling and, and just to focus on multi dimensional scaling for a while you see that is a procedure for determining the perceived relative images of products or brands transforms consumer judgments of similarity or preference into distance and perceptual space and now we are moving from you know uh, understanding uh, how customer recognizes recalls and uh, you know thinks of brands towards comparison basically so but in between comes in aspects related to purchase intention also and likelihood to recommend related aspects also you want to know that how far it would snowball the 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 emotion which customer has generated in his her mind how she would be recommending that further to someone so that is that is where you know the point of concentration also comes in and then there are aspects to brand relationships wherein brand loyalty attitudinal attachment sense of community and active engagement also comes in just to briefly mention methodologies are not uh, should i say specifically framed that one has to follow step 1 step 2 step 3 these are guides to us these have been specifically applied in several cases wherein brand managers have successfully deciphered how customers think about their brand our job as brand experts is to think in terms of the customer reaching the customer at the right moment at the right time asking the right kinds of questions and while thinking in terms of what questions would be right for the customer we may think in terms of what kind of methodologies would be apt for this customer basically so for example if you want to uh, discuss uh, with a customer on uh, you know how far she remembers one advertisement you may think in terms of asking her that what kind of television programs she watches if you are having this thought in mind that your television advertisement should be remaining in the minds of this customer and if she says that she is not a very you know frequent television viewer 
then you should not be going for those kind of methodologies which are related to that kind of uh, you know a customer. You know you are getting my point what, what I am trying to project here. We must think in terms of respondents and then the questions. And just to sum it up, just to summarize what I have been talking of, you see and, and as a brief kind of an element which you, you should remember at this particular stage, anything which you are asking can be converted into a, a quantified code and then those can be thought of with a correlative aspect as well. I mean statistically, we can, we can always do that. But if you are able to decipher those with a decision making perspective through first hand association with the customer in terms of brand research, it is the best thing which can be done. And that is why brand managers, they are always you know, willing to reach to the customers by themselves in a longitudinal method. That means an, as an ongoing exercise, which brings them near to the hearts of customer. The objective is building brand equity. I would be coming back to you with lots of insights on brand valuation, brand development and finally taking you to a stage of putting up a larger picture or a cumulative picture on how brand equity is developed or let us say get established. Bear with me till then, goodbye.